Hi guys, so for our discussion today, so we have Johnson's Rule, the algorithm in sequencing two or more jobs that pass through the same two machines or work centers. Now this algorithm minimizes the total production time and the idle time. Recalling our last discussion, we have discussed that there are several cases in job shop scheduling. So the first case was scheduling multiple jobs in one machine and we have the second case where we sequence multiple jobs into two machines. So basically, ibig sabihin lang niya, uh, we have a job na papasok siya into two machines in a sequential manner. So pag pumasok na yung first job on the first machine, so the second machine is completely idle kasi kailangan niyang intayin matapos yung job na yun na matapos sa first machine and then saka siya ipaprocess on the second machine. And here are the following steps in performing Johnson's rule or Johnson's algorithm. So first step is to list all the jobs and the times for each work center. So work center or machine, so parehas lang sila. And for the second step is to choose the job with the shortest activity time. So if that time is in the first work center, we are going to schedule the job first. So ibig sabihin, siya yung unang ipapasok sa system kapag yung shortest activity time is found in the first work center. However, if the smallest number can be found on the second work center, ibig sabihin, we are going to sequence that job last. And then number three, once a job is scheduled, it is eliminated from the list. Then for the last step is we're just going to repeat steps two and three working toward the center of the sequence. So basically, front, back, then kung ano yung susunod na smallest number. So magalaro lang siya hanggang sa makompleto natin yung mga slots for the job sequence. For the given example, we have five jobs A, B, C, D, and E, and they are going to be performed sequentially into two machines, Work Center 1 and Work Center 2. So the following information is given in R's, and yung mga box na nakita nyo on the right side of the screen, so dyan yung fill in natin later, that will give you the optimal sequence so that minimizes your idle time. So, for the first step of the process, so ang sabi, iscan daw lahat ng information on either machine and then look for the smallest number. Now, looking at the table, so nakita natin na yung number 2, yung pinakamaliit na number. And si number 2 ay nag exist on the second machine. So, ibig sabihin, si job A should be sequenced last. So, the next step is to find again the smallest number in the remaining jobs. So, looking again in the table, so si number 3, yung pinakamaliit na number at yun ay si job B under machine 1 or work center 1. So, since yung number 3 belongs at the first work center, so si job B should be sequenced first. Next step is again to scan the remaining jobs. So looking again at the information, so si number 4 yung next na smallest number and siya ay kay job C which will be performed in the second work center. Again, ang sabi sa algorithm is we're going to work towards the center of the sequence. So, since si C ay nasa second work center, so ilalagay ko lang siya sa tabi ni A. And then we have two remaining jobs, D and E. So, looking at the values, 7 yung pinakamaliit na number and Although may tie sila or parehas nag-exist yung 7 in both jobs, so magkaiba naman sila ng machine na pinag-performan. So let's just arbitrarily choose the job E. So nasa first work center siya. So ibig sabihin, we are going to sequence it next to B. And finally, since si job D yung remaining, so yun na yung ating fill in doon sa center spot of the sequence. Now that we're done with the optimal sequence of Johnson's algorithm, we are going to perform the time-phased graph to identify the total span time of the job and the total idle time of the sequence. 
So, in Work Center 1, papasok na si Job B and it will take Job B 3 hours to be completed on the first Work Center. Now, again, i-recall natin that this is a sequential process. So, once pumasok si Job B on the first machine, so yung second machine will be waiting for Job B to be completed on the first machine. Now, habang nag siya, so ibig sabihin, idle yung machine during the time that B is being completed in the first work center. So, we are going to represent the idle time as the red box in the time phase graph. So, once tapos na si job B on the first work center, pwede na siyang ipasok sa second work center. Now, we are going to calculate for the running total of work time para doon sa job B. So, since si machine 2 is idle for a total of 3 hours, and it will take job B to be completed in the second work center for 6 hours. So, yung ating running total for job B to be completed is just the sum between 3 and 6 which is 9. So, ibig sabihin, by the ninth hour of the operation, job B is already complete. So, the next job to be sequenced is job E. So, as soon as matapos si job B, on the first machine, pwede ko nang ilagay si job E. Now, we are going to calculate for the running total that machine 1 is running. Now, on the third R, si, si job B tapos na. And it will take job E to be completed in 7 hours. So, i-add lang ulit natin yung actual running time ng machine 1 which was 3 and then plus 7 which gives you a sum of 10. However, nagkaroon tayo ng red box doon which represents idle time for machine 2. So, bakit nagkaroon ng ganon? Kasi kung marirecall natin, si job B will be completed on the second machine on the ninth hour. Kaso, si job E matapos siya on the 10th hour pa. So, ibig sabihin, 9th hour pa lang, available na si machine 2 to accept job E. Kaso, pinaprocess pa siya sa first machine. So, maghihintay siya ng additional 1 hour para matapos si job E sa first machine. So, we are currently in the running total work time of 10 hours. So, by the 10th hour, pwede nang iprocess si job E on the second work center. Now, para makuha ulit yung total running time for the operation, so we are just going to get the sum between the actual work time for job E plus yung actual running time natin which is 10 hours. So, it will take 12 hours to be uh, for job E to be completed in the second work center. So, 10 plus 12, so that is 22. So, ibig sabihin, yung dalawang jobs will be completed by the 22nd hour of the operation. Next job to be sequenced is job D. So, si job D, pwede na siyang ipasok sa first work center pagkatapos sa pagkatapos magawa si job E. So, again, yung running total for the first work center is 10 hours. So, si job D will take 10 hours to be completed sa work center 1. So, i-add ko lang ulit yung 10 doon sa 10 na actual hour ni job D. So, by the 20th hour, complete na si job D in the first work center. So, next naman, ipaprocess ay si job D in the second work center. Now, si second work center has an actual running total time of 22 hours. So, para lang makita natin kung ano yung total work time for job D to be completed in the second work center, i-add ko lang yung total running time which is 22 plus the actual time it will take job D to be completed in the second work center. So, that is 22 plus 7, we have 29 hours. Again, kahit na medyo malayo na yung pagitan, 
ni Job D sa Work Center 1 and sa Work Center 2, never magkakaroon ng idol si First Work Center kasi pagkatapos na pagkatapos ni D sa First Work Center, pwede na niyang ilagay si Job C. So, umbaga, sequential siya. So, pag natapos na yung isang job dun sa First Work Center, pwede na siyang mag-input ulit ng another job. So, for the remaining two jobs, so, ganun lang din ulit yung gagawin natin. So, for us to get the total running time for each respective work center, so, we are just going to get the sum of the actual running time plus the actual time that it takes for a job to be completed on either work center. And looking at the final time phase graph so the last number that we can see is 35 so that is our total span time so it will take us 35 hours for the actual sequence to be completed and then taking into account the red blocks there so we have a total of three plus one hour idle which gives us a total of four hours idle time for this sequence of jobs.